what's up everybody? Today I'm going to show you how to assemble your board. There's been a lot of people asking how we do this, so I'm going to go over all the basics. First things first, I got a nice beautiful 136 spark here. Usually the first thing you can pop on is your fins. Um, your fins, I already have three on here. As you can tell, the big part, the flat big part of the fin goes out to the outside and it tapers down into the middle. So on our new best boards, we have our fins and we come with these cool washers here. And you got your fin. So if I'm assembling this tip of the board, over here, all I'm gonna do, you can kind of put these through first, like so. So you got the screw in the washers. And then you can kind of push your fin up against the back here and just get the holes lined up and just finger screw in the first uh, couple parts. I just kind of do this because it's the easiest way. And then once I kind of get them pretty far down there, where I think screwing in with my finger won't be any quicker than the screwdriver, take the screwdriver and screw them down. And you want them fairly tight. You know, you shouldn't have, just, I'd say it's hand tight, you know, with the screwdriver. So you just keep pushing it in until it's hand tight. Like that. And then you can just double check, just kind of shake it around a little bit, make sure there's no wobble, and that's how you settle the fence. All right, next part is assembling your pads and straps. As you can tell, there's two spots on our new boards for that. Um, I think your Amadas have three spots. Uh, usually with the Spark and some other boards, the easiest way to kind of figure out where your stance is is based on your height. Um, so if you're kind of a bigger guy and you know that you're bigger, you want to kind of keep your stance out wide. If you're taller, if you're smaller, um, you want to keep your stance in a little bit more. Uh, there's a quick test you can do where you just simply, you know, jump off of a step, just like the first step, jump off and you kind of see how wide your feet are uh, when you land. That's usually the most comfortable position for people to kind of ride around in. Um, you just want to be able to make sure if your stance is too narrow, your knees won't really be able to bend in the right way. And if it's too wide, you kind of feel like you have no control of the board. Um, so on this one, it's really easy. This is a 136. Usually 90% of the people riding the smaller version are going to put it on the smaller setting on the inside. So what we're going to do is talk about the straps. So a lot of people mess this part up too. I'll try to make sure we get this good. But as you can tell, all our straps have this little plastic part here. And then they have these little clips here. Um, the clips go onto these metal rings. You just find the hole on the back, snap it on. It's not a hole, I guess, it's more just a slit. And then this plastic thing here on the bottom is where the screw is gonna go through. So it goes through the hole and through the plastic into the board. Um, pads and straps, if you're not sure which one's left and right, we have a new cool system to tell you. Um, our pads and straps all have the right, um, the, the straps are lined up with the part of the board they go to. So this black part is going to go with that strap, which means that that's going to be the right strap over there. So I just board backwards, but right to you. Um, if you can't tell, they're all offset. So the ones that are furthest out on the board um, are going to be closest to the heel edge of the board. So if you can tell here, so this board is Here's the ones that are furthest out, and they're closest to the heel edge of the board. Do that, do that. So this is my right strap, or my left strap, I guess, sorry. And it goes here on the left side of the board. And remember, I'm gonna put them on the inside, because this is a smaller board. And then here is the new one. Remember, I've got the screw through both the plastic part and the strap. All right, so when assembling your board, you have you notice these three slits here. And essentially all these do is allow you to change the angle of the pad on the board. Um, some people prefer a very squared off stance where they get you know, the most balance. Some people like a more ducked out stance, so duck the you know, outward, uh, which also gives you just this, you know, balance. It's kind of personal preference. You can play with what you like. Uh, we're gonna set this up in the middle and middle on both of them just to do standard stock setup. Um, you can play around with it and move your duck around if you want. But essentially put the pad on, and line up the two inside holes um, with the kite uh, with the board. So I have my screw already in, pad already in. I'm gonna just line it up here, and I'm gonna basically just push this top part, the screw, into the hole like that. 
And you should be really careful here. This is where people always have trouble. This should screw in very easily. Um, if it's not screwing in easily, then you probably seated it wrong. So I'm just screwing it in. If it's not screwing or it feels like it's getting stuck, you should stop. I'm not gonna screw this in all the way because there's a cool trick you can do. But once I have this partially screwed in, not all the way, I'm gonna take the pad and I'm gonna shift it towards the screw that I just was at. Essentially putting this part of the pad really tight and making this part really loose. Um, and not loose, just further away. So if you can kind of maybe see on top, um, the screw actually now is far away from the pad, as opposed to right in there. So if I had it here, I would have that screw there. Now that I push it out, I have the screw all the way on the end, which will make it really easy for me to put the pad back in. So again, then I'm now there, just gonna line it up. And remember, you kind of hear it, don't just try and, it's just very simple finger tight screwing. If it sticks at all, stop, if you did it wrong. And then once you've got that in, you can tighten it down to, again, just finger tight. And that's that. All right, and now we've got our new 2013 grab handle. Uh, it's different than most grab handles. Uh, probably the biggest benefit is once you put it on, you don't ever have to take it off, even if you're going anywhere, because you can just smush it down in the packing process. Uh, it's also really easy to install because it's so bendable. It's also really functional, like when you actually grab it, it may seem flimsy, but once it's tight, it's actually really solid. I like it, and it's soft on the hands. Um, it comes with these screws. On the grab handle, you want to make sure you put the washer in. That'll just give it a nice flat push down. Pull on there, washer, through. Same kind of process we were doing on pads and straps, just now applying to the board. So, make sure they're pushed in all the way through. Grab handle. I like to line up my best logos. Just put it on top. Remember, just once it's lined up, all you have to do is finger tight it in. If it's not, going in, then you're doing it wrong. So, see so I have it in. Should not be tough. Just really easy to screw it down in. And the other side. And then the other side. And with our cool grab. This is the part where it's tricky because sometimes you might put it at an angle. Um, so just make sure it's nice and straight and that you're screwing straight down in. If it's at an angle, you might feel the screw carry out. Bring it the battery. And that's it. Once it's nice down tight, you've got yourself your grab handle.